everyone good evening i think all good to go <coughs> let's start with the first question and this is a <coughs> revision based session for you hi 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 everyone hi so <coughs> a 24 year old male presents with the ulcero proliferative uh growth over the glands and the profuse answer the question with respect to the image given below okay what is the answer <coughs> tell me yeah hi hi everyone okay so this is a very good question what is the answer for this question a b c or d let us try to understand the basic points by revising this topic let us try to complete this okay <clears throat> so first we'll first we'll discuss about the concept of ca penis so i'm going to enlist some important topics which are very important for your neat and next so the first topic that we are going to discuss is the concept of ca penis when we are talking about ca penis the most important thing that we have to understand is that it is of two types the carcinoma penis is of two types either it is in c2 either it is in c2 or it is invasive so either in c2 or invasive now when we are talking about in c2 we have two types of in c2 the in c2 involving involving the glands the profuse or non keratinized penile shaft non keratinized penile shaft what is the term for this non keratinized penile shaft glands and profuse induced uh, carcinoma in c2 answer is this is what is known as erythroplasia of curat so this is what is known as erythroplasia of curat i hope you must have heard of this term erythroplasia of curat next is let us talk about the invasive cancers when we talk about invasive cancer what do you acha there is one more if it is carcinoma in c2 involving the keratinized penile shaft keratinized penile shaft what is this known as come on tell me keratinized penile shaft this is known as a bowen's disease this is bowen's disease Are you getting? Now here only let us finish the management also for them. Yeah. So let let us see what is the management. There's a power cut and the AC is not working. It's very hot in Delhi. So the management is <clears throat> very simple. We are going to go for wide local excision with 0.5 centimeter margin. So wide local excision with 0.5 centimeter margin is the you can say the ideal management. one very important thing is one very important thing that we all have to understand apart from this or or you can also go for you can also go for five fluorouracil application that is topical five fluorouracil or you can also go for radiotherapy or you can go for laser ablation laser ablation these are the standard management protocols that we have now when you talk about the invasive cancer let us talk something about the invasive cancers also the most common site so let us start with the invasive cancer here i hope non invasive is absolutely clear so the invasive the most common type that we have what is the answer answer is scc the most common site that we have come on answer is the glands greater than profuse greater than glands 
plus profuse greater than glands plus profuse and this is greater than penile shaft this is what now when we talk about the staging if you see this question is all about staging yeah? so let us talk about the concept of staging so when we talk about the staging t1 is defined as into epithelium or you can say confined to the glands so into the epithelium and that is into the glands what else is important what is t2 it to corpora spongiosum into corpora spongiosum remember students this is what is a change this is what is a change in the staging system earlier it was into the corpora spongiosum or corpora cavernosa without invasion of the urethra here plus minus urethra are you getting plus minus urethra what is t3 into corpora cavernosa this is a great update so plus minus urethra in the t you can see agcc 8 version the staging has changed and what is t4 yes local invasion local invasion this is what local invasion so t1 t2 then when we talk about n when you talk about n n1 is so n1 is unilateral unilateral inguinal lymph nodes superficial inguinal lymph nodes n2 is presence of unilateral unilateral deep inguinal lymph nodes deep inguinal lymph nodes or you can say or you can say bilateral superficial inguinal lymph nodes and then n3 is unilateral or bilateral unilateral or bilateral what deeper lymph nodes deep lymph nodes what are deep lymph nodes iliacs yeah obturator these are classical deep lymph nodes now if you go for the management the treatment this is very 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 simple but say diagnosis is made with the help of biopsy and what kind of biopsy do we go for we go for punch biopsy or you can go for incision biopsy or simply you can also go for excision biopsy so these are the three ways you can do the biopsy very simple the next very important thing is but say the treatment involves wide local excision with 1 to 2 cm margin earlier it was 2 cm margin now we have accepted a 1 cm just like oral cancer plus minus inguinal lymph node dissection inguinal lymph node dissection now the question is when are you going for that inguinal block dissection this is done this is done for t2 and above this is done for t2 and above so let us try to understand this let us try to understand this question the question that we have seen erythroplasia of curat is carcinoma in c2 absolutely true this is absolutely true If you see glands is the most common site absolutely true inguinal block dissection is done for t2 and above tumors absolutely true corpora spongiosum corpora spongiosum is involved is involved if it is involved is considered t3 no it is t2 so this is wrong the option c is wrong so we have revised the topic along with this we have completed this let us move forward yeah let us talk about this question let us talk about this question this is also a very important topic for you all so identify the diagnosis what is the diagnosis of this what is the diagnosis a 26 year old college student present with a painful defecation with bleeding pr following is the image following is the image but see can you see something can you see something there is a breach in anoderm there is breach in anoderm and when we talk about breach in anoderm along with that painful defecation this is most in favor of fissure, fissure in anoderm this is most in favor of fissure in anoderm excellent fissure in anoderm there is also one more thing that you can see here what is that outgrowth of mucosa 
resulting in papilla formation so what is this mucosal outgrowth known as what is this mucosal outgrowth known as so mucosal outgrowth this is what is a sentinel tag this is what is known as a sentinel tag are you getting this this is what is next is let us try to understand a beautiful concept of fisher in anno and what are the must know points of fisher in anno yeah fisher in anno or let us try and understand approach to bleeding pr approach to bleeding pr now when you talk about approach to bleeding pr this is very important for you because this is a day to day problem how to how to see a patient of bleeding pr now in this what could be the differential diagnosis what could be the differential diagnosis this is what is either hematochezia what is hematochezia this is stool yeah 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 right how did how did you come to the stool mixed with stool mixed with blood yeah the second is the second is it could be rectorrhagia 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 this is what is rectorrhagia this is fresh bleeding pr this is fresh bleeding pr let us try to understand one more very important thing about this what are the causes of hematochezia but the hematochezia the most common cause is a fissure or maybe it may be an a bleeding associated with what some large colon pathology or a small colon uh, a large intestinal pathology basically or a small intestinal pathology also in certain cases now bachche the most common cause the most common cause yeah i'm within the these sessions are for fmg only and fmg revision session is starting on the plus in on the plus platform in an academy app so plus platform ke liye fmg revision is starting from the 1st of may so very soon yeah. so most common cause most common cause of this uh, you can say bleeding pr or most common cause of lower gi bleeding basically if i talk about lower gi bleeding what is the answer overall students the overall answer is diverticulosis diverticulosis so i will discuss a lot of topics in this because this is a very big 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 thing now in young in west so in west the answer is same the answer is diverticulosis in young what about young population come on tell me answer is anorectal disorders so anorectal disorders they are very important cause they are very important cause in these patients yeah let us in young patients now if you talk about asian subcontinent indians or asians they are having a relative less incidence of diverticulosis so hamare yahan anorectal causes are the most common causes let us talk about few important points on diverticulosis few important points on hemorrhoids let us talk about this so let us talk about diverticulosis let us talk about a uh, sorry i'm saying divert just a minute okay so few important points on fisher and few internal points on hemorrhoids hemorrhoids these are the most common anorectal diseases that we have in day to day life let us see when we talk about diverticulosis what is so important because last year you had a classification based question in cheese classification tell me what is so important about diverticulosis bachche diverticulosis the most common site the most common site answer is colon what kind of colon what colon we we have it is the sigmoid colon sigmoid colon answer you have to understand overall overall it is the left colon and in the left colon it is the sigmoid where it is most frequent the second very important thing in in asians in asians remember the right colon right colon and basically it is the cecum which is the most common cecum is the most common just give me a minute just a minute okay next is next is one very important thing about the etiopathogenesis of diverticulosis is how this diverticulosis happens 
Now the concept of diverticulosis is associated with one very important thing. In elderly, in elderly, there are two things. First is constipation. There is constipation, and then second is hyperelastosis. Hyperelastosis. Now, how can you relate this hyperelastosis and constipation with diverticulosis? The second important fact that you all have to understand that diverticulosis in case of sigmoid colon, this is a pseudo. So colonic diverticulosis, colonic diverticulosis is a pseudo diverticula. That means not all the layers are involved. But try to understand this very beautiful fact. Do you know that if you see a colon, if you see a colon, the colon is identified by its frustrations, yeah, by its frustrations. And the frustrations are always interdigitating. And whenever the fecal matter is moving, the fecal matter is moving out. What will happen? This colonic wall, this colonic wall, this colonic wall will come close and form a compartment. So, what is this compartment phenomena known as? This compartment phenomena is known as tonic segmentation, tonic segmentation, and rhythmic contraction. Students, it has been asked in PGI Chandigarh a lot of times. Now we don't have PGI Chandigarh, but they have. Their favorite topic, one of our favorite topics was diverticulosis. Since INICT is there on the corner, you may get all accepted true. So tonic segmentation and rhythmic contraction, rhythmic contractions, they are very, very, very important thing. That is utility tool or utility concept of the colon. Now what will happen during this tonic segmentation and rhythmic contraction? The colon will absorb. The colon will absorb the moisture, and during this, it absorbs moisture, and that is why if you don't defecate, yeah, the stool will become harder, 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 harder. Now, what is the concept of hyperelastosis? Now, this is very important. If there is high meds education, high high. God bless you. So, when we talk about hyperelastosis, there is increase in collagen three. There is increase in collagen three. Instead of collagen one, there is increase in collagen three. Therefore, associated with powerful contractions, powerful tonic contractions. Now, this is where the problem start. Why? Because this phenomenon of tonic segmentation and rhythmic contraction has always been present in the patient's life, right from the kid age up to the elderly. This phenomenon of tonic segmentation and rhythmic contraction was there, but in the elderly. What happens? There is constipation, and along with that, there is hyperelastosis. So more powerful contraction. अब देखो क्या होता है? Just see. I will share one diagram. I'll try to focus. I'll try to show you something. Now, but see, this is the mucosa. This is the mucosa, and then we have then we have sub mucosa. Try to understand. This is the sub mucosa. This is the sub mucosa, and then we have the muscularis. Then we have the muscularis. What is this muscle? This is inner circular muscle, and then do you know that outer, outer you can say longitudinal muscle has constricted itself to form the tinea. So there are teneas which have resulted from the constriction, or you can say condensation of the outer longitudinal muscle. So what is this? This is inner, inner circular. This is inner circular, and these are the tinea. these are the tinea which are nothing but condensation condensation of outer longitudinal layers now just see what is going to happen in order to make a muscle survive you need a blood vessel yeah you need a blood vessel and what is this vessel which is supplying the wall known as these are known as vasa recta so always remember there are vasa rectas which are traveling into these tinea are you getting this there are vasa rectas now because of the powerful contraction try to understand because of powerful contraction the vasa recta the space where you have this vasa recta what will happen there will be some opening there will be some opening for the vasa recta yeah, there will be some opening for the vasa rectas yeah what will happen the place where you have the opening for the vasa recta actually leads to leads to the out pouching of the mucosa so what is going to happen here students the mucosa the mucosa out pouches and it out pouches via what the opening which was meant for the 
vasa recta and that is why mucosa and sub mucosa only herniates out and thus this is a pseudo diverticular point number 1 and this is the concept why constipation leads to this thing in case of you can say colon are you getting this is a very simple concept don't mug up the things now what is the sequels what is the complication associated so presentation of diverticulosis presentation the patient might remain asymptomatic point number 1 the patient i hope this concept of tonic segmentation rhythmic contraction and powerful contractions clear to you people yeah so it is not and one more thing one more thing when we talk about bleeding associated what is the cause of bleeding what do you think is the cause of bleeding the bleeding is in this case is the damaged vasa recta at the neck so damaged vasa recta leads to bleeding vasa recta at the neck of diverticula which leads to bleeding is that clear next is, so they may remain asymptomatic or the most common is diverticulitis diverticulitis then third is it might go and result in fistulae yeah fistulae so when you talk about fistulae it could be colocolic it could be colo uh, you can say uh, vesical yeah it could be colo ileal colo ileal a lot of lot of lot of this is what is this is what is the result yeah next is colo we have seen the fistulae the fourth is the fourth is perforations perforations yeah rarely it can lead to malignancy rarely rarely it can lead to malignancy students when we talk about diverticulitis diverticulitis we have a grading system for this and that was asked in exam last year when you talk about the grading what is the grading yeah maruti very good what is the grading system that we have we have a hinges we have a hinges and modified hinges modified hinges what do you mean by modified hinges dekho the first is the first is grade 1 this is pericolic pericolic abscess pericolic abscess and this can be drainable then second is a distant abscess a distant abscess so abscess away from the site of you can say diverticulosis very good the third is the third is yeah purulent peritonitis purulent peritonitis that means the pus is causing the peritonitis purulent peritonitis and then we have type 4 that is feculent peritonitis now how is this feculent this is associated with perforation so feculent peritonitis when we talk about when we talk about this concept of uh, uh, hinges this tells you that 1 2 and 3 One, two, and three. If you talk about the treatment, you have the conservative treatment. You have the conservative treatment. Are you getting? And when you talk about four, what is the management? You have to go for resection and anastomosis. When you talk about resection plus anastomosis, what is the resection that we do? We go for left hemicolectomy, left hemicolectomy, or in certain cases, you might go for only. distal sigmoidectomy distal sigmoidectomy this is very important so left hemicolectomy or distal sigmoidectomy point number 1 one very important thing that we all have to understand is what is the conservative management antibiotics antibiotics and along with that long term ppis long term ppi ah uh, sorry i'm saying long term ppi probiotics probiotics is that clear to everyone now when we are talking about this question when you talk about the fissure let us understand the concept of fissure in ano also this is very 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 important very important what is the basic concept of fissure in ano let us see this also fissure in ano this is a breach in anoderm this is a breach in anoderm and when we talk about breach in anoderm why this happens what what is the cause this is because of the constipation because of the constipation the hard stool causes abrasion so why during constipation it happens due to abrasion due to abrasion by stool 
Now try to understand what happens now. Because of this breach in anoderm, breach in anoderm, there is pain and because of this pain, the patient develops aversion, aversion to defecate or when the patient develops aversion for the defecation, it actually worsens, it actually worsens the state of constipation and this is what is the most lethal thing that happens and this is how the things keep on keep on keep on continuing now one very important thing why the things are getting damaged but see whenever why there is pain whenever there is breach in anoderm there is increase in the tone this is a compensatory mechanism of the anus that there is increase in tone of the internal sphincter there is increase in tone of internal sphincter so that it it wants it wants the mucosa submucosa to heal the torn mucosa submucosa to heal every time when the stool passes the anal canal is further distended and this tissue never heals and the dermal nerve endings keep on initiating the pain so this is how the things compound when we talk about the management of fissure when we talk about the management of fissure in anal this is really very 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 important important is no dre no digital rectal examination or no anal speculum examination this is the first thing why when you do a dre or anal speculation uh, speculum examination first of all it is painful why it is not done because it is painful i have seen patient fainting the second is it will it will increase the tear it will increase the chances of tear are you getting so how do you inspect the most important thing is inspection inspection with clinical history with clinical history or uh, you can say this is sufficient for diagnosis this is how you make diagnosis now what is the problem you want to treat but before the treatment you have to understand the association with the anus so when we talk about the association with the anus the first thing is where it is so if we talk about the anus let us take this to be the anal verse so where in anus it is this depends a lot on this depends a lot on this coordinates ab ye kya hai ye coordinates ka kya concept hai try to understand we have some locations we have certain locations in the anus this is considered as anterior this is considered as posterior and these are considered as lateral important thing is what are the causes what are the causes let us tell you let me tell you idiopathic idiopathic or constipation associated constipation associated fissures are either located anterior or they are located posterior now this is very 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 important why because it is only the anterior and the posterior fissures which should be managed lateral fissure before you do any intervention before you do any intervention you should know that they are not very common and they are either associated with syphilis or they are associated with crohn's they are associated with crohn's they are associated with tb or they may be associated with anything like malignancy also sometimes rarely rarely but they may be associated with some malignancy also so this is what important thing that we have to understand is important is no surgical intervention no surgical intervention for lateral fissure in ano lateral fissure in ano why you need to treat the disease before you treat it because you keep on doing the patient will have no relief now when we talk about the treatment ideally what is the treatment what are the goals the patient is having pain so how can you reduce the pain the pain can be reduced with the help of analgesics point number 1 but in analgesic also there is a limit sits bath i hope you must have heard of sits bath in sits bath when the patient sits in a tub filled with water actually this is going to utilize the concept of getting theory of pain way pain pathway so getting theory of pain pathway this is for 15 to 20 minutes then how you can further reduce the pain you want to decrease the tone since the tone of the anus will be decreased you will also have an ease of passing the stool 
and that squeezing pain will be reduced. So pain can be reduced by reducing the tone and this can be reduced by using calcium channel blockers. So this is there are topical diltiazem based ointments yeah or you can also use calcium channel blockers plus nitrates plus nitrates is that clear so calcium channel blockers alone or calcium channel blockers with nitrates along with that how you can reduce the pain by using the stool softeners by using the stool softeners and therefore decrease the constipation this is how but you're decreasing the pain with calcium channel blockers or calcium channel blockers with nitrates this is what is known as chemical sphincterotomy chemical sphincterotomy if you go to my youtube channel there are a lot of videos on sphincterotomy because if this fails if this fails what to do you have to go for lateral internal sphincterotomy you can go to my channel and see those videos that wonderful you will understand everything lateral internal sphincterotomy is the surgery of choice yeah it is the surgery of choice so this is very 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 simple and basic thing let us go to let us go to i think there is some problem just give me a minute let us go to the next question let us go to the next question what has happened here i'll take one minute i think there is some problem yeah so let us go to this following is the image showing axillary dissection so there are three structures answer the following identifying the structures which are labeled a b and c point number 1 and all except are spared all except are spared in case of the mrnd yeah. all except are spared this is a very easy question you can tell just with a go you can tell this all except are spared i can zoom the diagram also for you if you are having any problem what is what are the structures labeled structures labeled a b and c now try to understand this is an axilla yeah i hope you can understand this is an axilla and when you talk about axilla what is a a stands for axillary vein so here you have axillary vein which is the upper boundary of axillary dissection upper boundary of the axillary dissection so if you talk about axillary lymph nodal dissection this is axillary vein then what is the structure labeled b can you see this is a thoraco dorsal pedicle this is thoraco this is thoraco dorsal thoraco dorsal pedicle then what is the structure labeled c what is the structure labeled c if you see carefully here you have a long thoracic nerve so long thoracic nerve and what is this long thoracic nerve better known as yeah, nerve of bell this is known as nerve of bell and actually what is it this is a nerve to serratus anterior injury to this will result in winging of scapula winging of scapula are you getting this also remember the thoraco dorsal pedicle will mark the lateral boundary will mark the lateral boundary of the dissection so lateral is by this then who is going to mark the inferior boundary the inferior boundary is actually contributed by the inferior boundary is contributed by angular vein angular vein point number 1 the second is you can say the latissimus dorsi when we talk about the medial boundary when you talk about the medial boundary who will form the medial boundary students the medial boundary is formed by answer is the rib cage the rib cage also here if you dissect it more deep you will get to see coraco coraco acromion ligament when we talk about coraco acromion ligament what is this coraco acromion ligament better known as this is known as halsted ligament halsted ligament so this is what is the territory from which you will dissect the lymph nodes this is what is a territory from where you will do the axillary lymph node dissection the important thing is more than equal to 10 lymph nodes 
should be harvested at least they should be harvested now, this is what is the classical concept of this now if you see in this structure in this structure what is what is this type of mastectomy this is an this is an m this is m r n d what type can you see with this retractor with this retractor i have this is my own surgery picture i have retracted the p minor so there is retraction of the p minor and if you do retraction of the p minor this will be known as ossian clause so what is the surgery better known as the surgery is better known as ossian clause type of mastectomy are you getting so let us try to understand few important things in this concept yeah. so the answer for this is p minor not always do we spare p minor in the petis type of mastectomy you can resect it off so let us quickly see two three important points on this concept mastectomy when we talk about mastectomy what are the types of mastectomy we have we have lot of types we have classical classical simple mastectomy we have simple mastectomy where you are only removing the breast only the breast is actually removed in this patient and then we have mrm then we have mrm modified radical mastectomy but a radical mastectomy is an obsolete concept no one is practicing this radical mastectomy are you getting this radical mastectomy is a history now no one is doing but still i'll tell you two three points on this when we talk about mrm mrm modified radical mastectomy there are two three questions asked on this modified radical mastectomy okay what is the first important question what is the incision that you make for these patients the incision that we make for this patient is elliptical we make an elliptical incision what kind of elliptical incisions you make you make elliptical transverse incision so this is the mass if this is the mass this is elliptical transverse incision and when we talk about elliptical transverse this is what is known as a steward's incision steward's incision are you getting steward's incision then we have something which is known as elliptical oblique incision so this is where the elliptical oblique incision comes into role play yeah elliptical oblique so elliptical oblique what is this known as this is known as or incision this is known as or so one thing is clear this is the concept of incision but in a radical mastectomy why radical mastectomy became obsolete the incision that was made for radical mastectomy was also not justifiable it was a square incision we used to make a square incision and if you make a square incision therefore the skin approximation never happened so when you do a square incision the skin approximation will never happen and therefore a flap reconstruction required every time you do this so flap reconstruction done so nowadays that is the reason why radical mastectomy became obsolete then when we talk about radical mastectomy why it was radical mastectomy the structures resected were p major also p minor also over the time in mrm in mrm you remove the breast you remove the breast you remove the axillary lymph nodes yeah and plus minus you do resection of the p minor p minor is resected resection resected why p minor is resected the question is sir what is the need answer is it is needed it is needed to access to access the central and the apical group of lymph nodes central and the apical lymph nodes tennis racket incision bachche is made for benign pathologies but since you have asked let me tell you tennis racket kahan use karte hain tennis racket this is done for single duct pathology for single duct nipple discharge so when you have a single duct nipple discharge when you have a single duct like let us take in case of have you heard of uh, intraductal papilloma so suppose this is the duct from where you are having a true polyp and this polyp is causing a bleeding yeah 
so what is the first thing that you will do you will bring in a guide wire a malleable guide wire is brought in here let me use a different color okay try to understand this so let me see this is a guide wire i'll get a guide wire i'll insert this guide wire now over this guide wire i will plan my incision so this is a circumferential incision around the orifice and then i will extend it behind so if you see it mimics that tennis racket concept so tennis racket concept of incision is made for single duct nipple discharge and benign causes benign causes is that clear or no when we talk about the benign causes we also have two other incisions what are the two other incision other incision we have a webster's incision we have a webster's incision so for benign breast diseases for benign breast diseases we have webster's incision students and we also have gallard thomas we have gallard thomas incision what is the concept of webster's incision and gallard thomas do you know in benign breast diseases the paramount importance is given to cosmesis so if you give the incision if you make the incision along the nipple areola complex this is what type of incision this is a circum areola this is a circum areolar incision and this is also known as webster's incision webster's incision the second variety is the second variety is if you make the incision along the inferior membrane crease inferior membrane crease that is what is known as this is inferior membrane crease inferior membrane crease this is gallard thomas so these are the incisions that we make for the benign i hope that is clear case now one very important thing is mass mrm what are the types of mrm that we have mrm is of three types what are the three types we have a petis what is a petis variety petis variety where there is division where there is division of p minor so division of the p minor in order to access into the you can say the apical group of lymph nodes and then we have scanlon we have scanlon what is scanlon students scanlon variety is a variety where you actually don't resect but rather you split so splitting of p minor splitting of p minor to gain access into the you can say apical compartment of the lymph nodes and then we have ocean clause then we have ocean clause when we talk about ocean clause this is where we do retraction of the p minor the retraction of p minor this is how the things are different i'll quickly show you one one surgery where you will be able to see this concept of portion claws also just give me a second just give me a second just give me a second so okay try to see this surgery this is a specimen of mrm this is a specimen of mrm and this is how the things are done now if you see this is the what is this muscle let me tell you this muscle this is pectoralis major this is pectoralis major a muscle this is what is p minor this is what is p minor so let us see this question let us see this why it is not zooming in okay so try to understand when i want to dissect this when i want to dissect this okay when i want to do a axillary dissection can you see my retractor just try to see this retractor yeah this retractor coming down and this is retracting the p minor can you see this is retracting i am doing the retraction of the p minor so if you see if there is a retraction of the p minor this is going to this is going to give you access to the lymph nodes so this is what is the classical way can you see you can see the lymph nodes and i'm harvesting the lymph nodes so there is no need to remove this so we have we have the structures if you see this is the lateral wall and here this is inferior angular vein yeah i'll show you all the structures here this is the okay so i'll show you the structure one by one this is the this is the nerve to serratus anterior long thoracic nerve of bell 
yes the structure i'm holding this is nerve of bell you don't have to inject there are certain lymph nodes which will be clear of this so can you understand the classical way of removing the lymph nodes we have plugged off the lymph nodes the lymph nodes are getting plugged already it has they have been removed we are removing more lymph nodes try to understand the anatomy once again so the structures i will be pointing axillary vein yes axillary vein this see so in this video if you see this is axillary vein this is axillary vein this is thoracodorsal pedicle here you have in angular vein this is the nerve to serratus anterior this is the rib cage and this is the place from where you dissect the lymph nodes so i hope that is clear let us move forward let us move forward and go to the next question okay so i hope this is uh, this is all for the day and tomorrow at 2 pm i will take a class and then 10 pm again i will take a class so this is going to be there for next 3 4 days every day i will be taking one hour class morning evening for you so i hope you enjoyed and do join the un academy plus using the code surgery live you can also use the code dr dikshit do follow me on un academy so that you don't miss notification of my classes so till then bye bye i hope you enjoyed this session and i'll be getting more such